ideas.com Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. In today's podcast, it's going to be looking at a few public company announcements from Chiron Life Sciences Corporation, trading on the TSX Venture as KHRN and the OTCQV as KHRNF, Aurora Cannabis Incorporated, trading on the New York Stock Exchange and the TSX as ACV, Canopy Growth Corporation, trading on the TSX as weed, the New York Stock Exchange as CGC, as well as Canopy Rivers Incorporated trading on the TSX as RIV and the OTC as CNPOF. So first looking at Chiron Life Sciences, uh, who announced it's entered into an agreement with Canaccord Genuity Corporation as lead underwriter and sole book runner on behalf of a syndicate of underwriters to increase the size of its previous announced bought deal uh, from $10 million to $12.6 million. Pursuant to the amended terms, the underwriters have agreed to purchase 28 million units of the company on a bought deal basis, pursuant to a short-term perspective at a price per unit of 0.4 or 45 cents for gross proceeds of 12.6 million. Uh, so, obviously, trading has been halted for Chiron for the day and probably will be halted a couple times uh, leading up to the finality of this bought deal. Uh, which is expected on November 26th and is subject to certain conditions, including but not limited to the receipt of all necessary approvals, including the approval of the TSX Venture Exchange. Um, the company intends to use the net proceeds of the offering to expand the company's operating capacity and for the working capital requirements and other general corporate purposes. Uh, so Chiron Life Sciences is obviously, again, going to be kind of on hold for the next couple of weeks. Um, I'd definitely be paying attention to them and Canaccord Genuity Corporation. And again, uh, paying attention to sort of what Chiron has achieved over this last year. As I've said, this has been a pretty successful year for them as far as milestone achievements within the Colombian cannabis environment. Um, and it does seem like they're heading for further expansion into global markets within the next year. So I would assume that that's what that funding is going to be put towards is into their expansion plans. Um, and yeah, I would definitely just pay attention to those too. But like I said, going to be on hold for the next little bit. Next, looking at Aurora Cannabis, as well as Canopy Growth and Canopy Rivers, who all announced different financial results today. So Aurora Cannabis announced its financial and operational results for the first quarter in fiscal 2021, end of September 30th. Um, again, if you want to read the full details, click the links attached in the article. We continue to take the necessary steps to execute our plan and transform our business to achieve sustainable profitability and ultimate positive cash flow, stated Miguel Martin, the Chief Executive Officer of Aurora Cannabis. From the first quarter of 2021, results are transitional, but do highlight successes across a number of diverse profit pools. We remain the leader by revenue in the high-margin cannabis medical market. Our international medical business experienced more than 40% net revenue growth this quarter, and our CBD brand, Reliva, is number one ranked by Nielsen in the U.S. CBD sector. Now, while we are not satisfied with our past performance in the growing Canadian consumer business, we have a sense of urgency in the execution of our tactical plan to grow profitable businesses and market share. And our efforts are directed at delivering the highest quality products, refocusing on our leading premium and ultra premium brands, better allocating our sales and marketing spend, and executing key account partnerships at both the province and retail levels. Um, something to note, uh, just with each of these different uh, financial releases that came out this day, um, Aurora Cannabis still riding the high it had from last week's election results uh, due to cannabis election results, basically. And uh, they were up over 80% last week, still up about 20%, which is, again, sort of bumping the trend that you've seen in the past, where, again, any of these financial results usually have a big trading spree up to the financial results and then a big drop off afterwards. Um, again, this has been the consistent theme when you're looking at these larger LPs and their financial results over time. And this does sort of go to the main uh, trend that's being noted today, which is that obviously there's an uptick again in cannabis stocks and cannabis interest. Um, again, having those cannabis states all go through on their electoral ballots definitely did a huge boost for the industry again. I think also having people not focus maybe as heavily on the White House in the same sort of uncertainty. I know that there still is some regarding that, but not in the same sense. Might allow some businesses and some of the investors to kind of realize now that it's safe to go back into investing in cannabis as there's very likely chance of the safe bank act getting passed within the next year or at least some sort of cannabis reform again that does seem to be expectation and the overall consensus around the market right now is that there is the renewed interest within the cannabis sector and you can see it again within the trading 
a lot of these larger LPs saw massive upticks over the last week. It's continuing into this week, even with their financial results, again, which aren't really showing anything any different than what you've seen in the past, as much as it does boast that, oh, they're adjusting their strategies to be more profitable. That's what they've been saying since inception. And uh, again, Aurora Cannabis most likely going to follow the same routes that Canopy Growth has done when it comes to their higher end market segment within the Canadian retail, uh, which is to start partnering with small producers. Um, and that's what we've seen now is the, kind of the best strategy for any of these large scale producers. Now that they've built out the infrastructure and the supply chain, just going to be partnering with micro grows um, and building out those brands and selling on the premium bud market. Uh, again, there are, it seems like the lower cost to mid range bud market within the Canadian market right now um, is being taken over mainly by a few medium sized producers. You're not seeing the large scale producers, even though they are still selling a fair amount of it, it's not being received the best um, and still doesn't have consistency within any of those markets. So I do think in general, that's what you're going to see is, again, more of this focus on micro cultivators on building and buying up brands, which Canopy Growth has done a really good job of within the last year. And that's been kind of their bigger lead to success. Uh, so Canopy Growth also announced its financial results for the second quarter, fiscal 2021, ended September 30th. Our renewed strategy of winning consumer mind share, along with the increased agility and execution, has resulted in a record net revenue for the second quarter and momentum across key areas of business, said David Klein, the CEO. Canopy Growth is positioned to continue growth as we establish a strong leadership position that's showcased through our vast portfolio of differentiated brands and products, including our industry-leading cannabis-infused beverages. So again, that does seem to be what's put Canopy ahead a little bit. Um, and again, if you're paying attention to how their stocks have been trading, they are pretty much at a record high for the last year. Um, going back up to prices, we saw closer to uh, when these stocks first started trading and there was the initial excitement around the cannabis industry. So again, you're starting to see some of these stocks return to a little bit more of where they were in their past. And the renewed momentum could carry through, uh, especially if there is continued talks around cannabis uh, federal reform within the next two years which does seem likely just based on uh, the Senate. And again, next looking at, or last looking at Canopy Rivers, uh, who released its unaudited condensed interim consolidated financial statements and management discussions and analysis for the three and six months that's ended September 30th. Our quarter was framed with a sharp focus on farmhouse. And we provided debtor in finance, sorry, we provided debtor in possession financing to enable farmhouse to remain operational as it commenced its CCAA process. And our team has been working towards securing the best possible outcome for our shareholders, said Narbe Alexandrian, president and CEO of Canopy Rivers. And while supporting farmhouse has been our priority, we're confident that we will put this challenging situation behind us and remain encouraged by the progress of through our portfolio. Now this current quarter, we participated in headsets bridge round as it continues to bring the industry's leading analytical tools to new markets. And High Beauty launched a new product line and Biolumix's most recent cannabis field trial showed promising gains in dried flower mass and cannabinoid content. Um, so again, if you're paying attention to Canopy Rivers, stock's still on a downtrade following the usual trends that you've seen within this industry. Um, again, a little bit of a build up up until the financial results are released and then a little bit of a drop down afterwards. Not again too overwhelming on either side compared to maybe what we've seen in the past. Um, but this is also showing some of the difficulties within the Canopy Rivers versus the Canopy Growth sort of decision. Um, so Canopy Rivers obviously is the group of medium to small size companies that sort of built their own little ecosystem. Canopy Growth has built a large ecosystem of themselves or a large company and then start acquiring smaller brands. Um, the acquiring smaller brands has been paying off and having their massive system of distribution and experts and facilities uh, has really paid off for them and that they can then use or bring in these small craft growers or limited experts and then give them the tools they need to expand. Uh, whereas for Canopy Rivers, you have seen that Obviously, there's a lot of upsides to their ecosystem. I've talked to Narbe Alexandrian a couple times. Very interesting company, and they're very obviously on point when it comes to their strategies, but the difficulty can be, um, as he talked here about the difficulties with Farmhouse over the last quarter, that can be the problem is having so many different focuses um, can get muddled up, especially during COVID times where there's so many uncertainties for all these companies and they're changing strategies so rapidly. It can be difficult to keep all of them in line and keep that ecosystem well balanced as there is no uh, general leadership initiative in the way 
that you see maybe in canopy growth. That's all for today's podcast, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated ZM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.